This one is going to be a little bit geeky, but I think quite useful. Today we're going to have a look at some terminology that is often used when it comes to plants. In particular, we'll have a look at the definitions of family, genus, species, form, variety, hybrid and cultivar. Let's start with genus and species. Species is the second word in the plant's botanical name. The first word is the genus of which the plant is a part of. For example, this is Crisula ovata. Crisula is a genus of about 200 species. These species have similar genetics and physical attributes. The confusion sometimes comes into play when people start giving plants common names or nicknames. In the case of Crisula ovata, it is also known as the jade, money plant, lucky plant, etc. But other similar looking succulents such as Portula caria afra are also often called these common names. Family is the higher classification, one up from the genus. Crisula and many other succulent genera such as Echeveria or Graptopetalum are in the Crisulaceae family. When a succulent is referred to as a species, it is likely growing naturally in that exact form in the wild in a place where it has evolved. A hybrid succulent or plant is a result of crossbreeding two different species or other hybrids sexually or in other words through pollination. Most hybrids are created in cultivation by humans, but they can also come into existence naturally if a pollinator happens to visit two different but compatible plants. Plants used for hybridization are often from the same genus, but they can also be from different genera, as it is the case with, for instance, Graptoviria, which is a cross between an Echeveria and a Graptopetalum. Historically, hybrids were created to get a tougher plant, but many these days are made to look pretty and can often be difficult to grow. I made a video last week where I discussed hardiness of hybrids and if you're at all interested, I'll link to it in the description. Hybrids are often named by the creator, though their botanical name would go something like genus, species, cross, species. For example, Echeveria bluebird's botanical name would be Echeveria colorada cross desmetiana, though sometimes the parents are not known or disclosed by the creator. Okay, so this is where it gets a little convoluted, but I'll do my best to keep it simple. Let's start with subspecies. You can often see this in a plant's botanical name as SSP or SUBSP. Subspecies is a rank below species and is used for a population of plants that have developed in a different location to the original species and have slightly different physical characteristics. They can be different in size, shape or color, but genetically they are still very closely related to the species. Subspecies are also isolated from the species and do not interbreed. A good example of a subspecies is Crisula arborescens, subspecies Undulatifolia. This is Crisula arborescens and this is the subspecies Undulatifolia. The main differences are the slightly wavy leaves, color, but also the growth habit. Undulatifolia grows a bit smaller. The next rank down below subspecies is variety, usually abbreviated to VAR in the botanical name of a plant. The definition of variety can be a bit different depending on where you look. A variety is a rank below the subspecies. Like subspecies, a variety is slightly different to the original species, but often varieties hybridize freely and are not isolated like subspecies. There's a whole deeper discussion that has been going on about the differences between subspecies and varieties, and it quickly becomes slightly difficult to understand without a lesson in nomenclature and taxonomy. I'm not going to go there as we'd be here for a long time, but I will link a few articles in the description that discuss this in detail. Below variety, there's another rank that you may often see in botanical names of plants called form, abbreviated to F in the name. As with subspecies and varieties, a form is morphologically different and can be a variation in species, subspecies and variety also. For instance, a variation in color or leaf or flower can often be called a form. Crisula ovata form variegata is a form with wide variegation. I've also seen quite a few plants where the flower color changes to white and often earns the plant F. alba. Subspecies, varieties and forms all happen in nature without direct human intervention. 
There are many subspecies varieties and forms out there that have not yet been named, but also those that have been named and not been unanimously agreed upon amongst botanists. It's a bit of a mess sometimes, as even the definitions can vary and be used interchangeably. The last term for today is cultivar, which is short for cultivated variety. Cultivars have been selectively bred by plant breeders based on specific desirable traits. A cultivar can be a human-made hybrid, a mutation, a plant created by grafting or other human interventions. A cultivar will be true to type and its traits can be maintained through propagation. So basically in nature, when a plant mutates, creates new hybrid through natural pollination or changes somehow, you get either a subspecies, variety or form. If these changes are done or maintained by humans, you have a cultivar. And I think this is where we wrap it up. I hope this was useful. You can let me know what you think in the comments and thank you very much for watching.